1981. He finally managed to escape the fast lane of Hollywood and move here to the city he made famous in that song. Home sweet home. The country superstar told us he's found peace at last. It's the only place I've ever lived that I know the date that I moved here and the year. And it's really home. This is a, I, the house was intact like it was. When I walked through the gates the first time, I said, this is really amazing. Yeah, I miss this place when I'm not here. Everything about Casa Campbell is right on cue for Glenn. With fourth wife Kim, he's the that proud father of two sons, with plans swinging into shape for a third. One of 12 children himself, he takes bloodline seriously and remains close to his kin from Arkansas. Despite his family tree, he says he's done enough branching out. This would be three kids. I figure a trio is good enough, you know. I, I can be the... I don't want to be the leader. I just want to be in the band if the three kids are musicians. You know, that way they can, they can be like the Beatles or somebody, right? And they'll say, who's the old guitar player to back? That's what I'd love to do. All of my love, all of my kissing, you don't know what you've been looking for. Young and Cal already has a handle on a down-home beat, like father, like drum. He grew up with that, with that feel, you know. It was amazing. He, he could keep time long before it could walk. Glenn's five children from three previous marriages are bittersweet reminders of a past when his priorities put career first. The Wichita lineman says that's all changed today, and he's singing a new tune. His wilder, hungrier days are behind him, and a fabulous fortune affords him the luxury of time at home. It's such a joy to, to be around them. You know, to, to play with them, to go swimming with them. Being around the kids, it's, it makes a big difference in your life. Well, the years keep slipping by me Like the miles out on the road But I don't guess I'll change my way of life Grits and Biscuits Country Life is carved into the heart and soul of Glenn Campbell. He made mom and dad regularly featured guests on his television series during the late 60s. Now his widowed mother and brother feature in a special video dedicated to his and beloved father, who left his last born with a heart full of memories. I miss you so. I was dad's uh, last son, and it uh, seemed like he kind of took me under his wing. I was his, I've always been his baby boy, you know, and he always took care of me. He was, dad was a, a great man. In proud tradition, Glenn rounds up the Campbells twice a week for some of that old-time religion, unashamed to humbly offer thanks for his newfound peace and joy. The original rebel yell quietly packs inner peace, something he never found on the party circuit. There's been a load of compromising on the road to my horizon, and I realize there will be a load of compromising on the road to my horizon. But I want to be where the light is shining on me. And, uh, not every time I sing it on stage now, I look at it as the light of God rather than any stage light. Well, I'm lonesome but happy. I'm rich but I'm broke. And the good Lord knows the reason I'm just a cowpoke. I guess I was born for it or God had this plan for me. I have no idea. I know I'm not smart enough to get here by myself. Somebody, you know, was up there watching over me and said, okay, now you do this and now you do this. And it was just like the salmon that swim up the river 800 miles to find where they were born, you know. I think I'm still swimming upstream. On our next edition of Fame, Fortune, and Romance, Glenn Campbell's incredible rags to riches journey, the day he sold his guitar to eat. The Campbells sing together now as they did then. With 11 brothers and sisters, young Glenn knew of no other life outside of hard work and horseplay. Then, as now, he draws strength and inspiration from the source of all his talent. I learned to sing, I think, in the churches. Uh, Mom always took us to church because we were all breastfed. <laughs> if you wanted your food, you, you went to church with Mom. The first song I ever remember singing all the way through was, Where Could I Go But To The Lord? Living below in this old sinful world and hardly a comfort can afford, striving along to face temptation strong, where could I go but to the Lord? Glenn also went to his good old Uncle Boo and learned guitar picking the hard way. I started him out when he was probably about five or six years old. I knew he had it, uh, well, I guess, when I first started teaching him to play guitar. Boo 
taught me to play guitar. And he made me use my, he'd make me use my little finger. If I didn't use my little finger, he'd get a pair of wire pliers and squeeze it till it hurt. I mean, it hurt. So therefore, I, if you see me play today, you'll see me use my little finger a lot. It, it stuck with me. Music fired his soul, so still a teen, Glenn made his first adult decision. He quit school and the fields to follow his dream, guitar picking. I left when I was 14, and I'd made the last crop for Daddy in the, that summer. And uh, it didn't take me long to figure out that the guitar was a lot better way to make a living than, than looking at the north end of a southbound mule. Mother hated to see him leave home, and Daddy, Daddy did too, but, you know, he wanted to play so bad, you know. He really enjoyed playing music. I mean, it's always been his blood. But playing music wasn't as lucrative as the farm boy imagined. Had it not been for his mother, Glenn's hopes and dreams would soon have hit the wrong note. I bought him a guitar, and then he uh, went off and when he first started on the show and lost his guitar. Had to pawn it for eats. And he called me and said, Mama, I went and lost my guitar, and I ain't got nothing to play. And I had to get out and drag cotton out and get him another guitar. <laughs> If it hadn't been for her, I ain't no telling what I'd have been doing today. But <laughs> Mama was, that was one of the important turn, turning points in my life. I figured if, you know, if I ever got in trouble, I could hock my guitar and Mama could pick cotton and get it out for me. <laughs> By the time I get to survived an amazing journey from hard times in the back-breaking cotton fields to the very peak of stardom. Television, movies and music, he's done it all, and always carrying with him the weight of his upbringing. I remember being hungry and cold when I was a kid. I don't know if that motivated me or not. I think I've been very lucky. Uh, I think everything that's happened in my life up to this point was for a reason, so I could maybe gain a little wisdom, a little understanding about life and what it's about. On our next edition, Glenn's Rootin' Tootin' Love Life, four marriages, and now the loving woman who brought him back from the brink of despair. One country superstar, fame and fortune came hard and fast. Romance, on the other hand, was quite another story. It's taken him four marriages to find happiness after first moseying down the aisle with his pregnant girlfriend when he was only 18. Well, that, that was decided for me. You know, we were always taught to live up to our responsibilities, so I got married. Were you in love? Uh, the kid came about two months later, so it was a... <laughs> I worked fast. So it was one of those, it was one of those situations. It was just something that, uh, a responsibility that I, I did it. It was, it was, I brought it all on, so live up to it. And I did it to the, the best way I could. Anyway, there was, uh, the, my, the son, he didn't, he didn't live over two weeks. He was pre, uh, premature. But uh, I got a lovely daughter out of it. And so it's, I guess it works out for the best. We'll Marriage number one hit a low note after three years. His second score was better composed, 16 years yielding three children. But it was in the mid-70s when Glenn's private life began making front-page news, more than his professional accomplishments. He married Sarah Davis, and gossip said he'd stolen her from Mac. That marriage lasted four years and produced one son. If you're keeping a scorecard, his next major involvement was the volatile affair with country star Tanya Tucker. Their nuptials turned into a knockdown, drag out affair that left gossip columnists gasping for adjectives. No wonder Glenn started singing the blues. You realize that you've been. Well, you can't go out and party all night and half of the day and get up on stage and do a song. Well, it, well I wasn't actually partying, I was just staying up, figuring out or get drunk, you know. And I realized I was bastardizing a God given talent. I don't know what got me that way in the first place. It was lies and deception from the people around me that I thought were being honest with me. And it really got to me. I said, how can this be? But just remember in your search for fortune and fame, what goes up must come down. 
I wasn't happy on stage play. Uh, I was very, very insecure. Uh, I just knew there had to, you know, something had to click. There was something better than the way everything was going, you know. So I just, I had to get out of what I had dug myself into up to that point. came in 1981. He met dancer Kim Woolen. 22 years his junior, she tapped into his heart after they met on a blind date. I didn't really take it seriously, you know, until I saw him, and then it was love at first sight, of course. But um, I thought, you know, he's so much older, I didn't take it seriously or anything. They dated briefly, separated, then struck a loving chord. She became Mrs. Campbell number four in December 1982. Glenn credits Kim with turning his life around. I met somebody that I was compatible with, that uh, wasn't, you know, BSing, and wasn't trying to use me for anything other than companionship and uh, love. And it's, it's amazing. Love forgives, and love doesn't keep a record of wrongs. You don't throw things up in people's face, you know. And you don't let the sun go down on your anger. So if you if you live by those things, you, it's pretty easy to get along with each other. Well, the main thing, she treats me like a man. And she treats me like the position that I'm in. As a man, as a husband, as a father. Glenn, when you think of Kim, what song title best describes your feelings about her? Would it be... Something about you, baby, that I like. Oh, happy day. True grit or, or gentle on my mind. Gentle on my mind is a good one. True grit is a great song. I think it is. It's uh, someday, little girl, the sadness will leave your face, and we'll wake up and see a world that is fine and free. So, yeah, one day we will. We'll wake up and see a world that's that's fine and free. We'll ease a bit when you. Can 